Okay, gentlemen, we got your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to protect yourself at all times. At all times, I want you to obey my command. Touch glove back to your corners. Go back to your corner. It's after the fight, but Duke doesn't want to give him a good birthday present. He wants to give him a loss tonight, which will be Perez's second in his 14 fight career. Bernardo Osuna alongside International Boxing Hall of Famer Tim Bradley. Duke Reagan said he did therapy for the elbow, dealing with a tendonitis. He couldn't extend the elbow when he jabbed and he hurt it when blocking punches, but tonight he's 100% and he got to camp not only with the renewed hunger, Tim, but in shape. Came in, they said about no more than 10 pounds overweight, been out of the ring for a year. That tells you right there the discipline and the mindset of Duke. You know, still staying under control and not letting himself go even though he was going through what he was going through. That shows you right there the commitment of the young man and where he wants to go in the sport of boxing. You know, he went back to his uncle, his dad's best friend, Tim Singleton, while he was back home in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they know him as too still because when they're training or you stand in the ring, you're too still. That means you need to move. And his mom will yell too still as well if she <laughs> sees Duke not moving in the ring. So sometimes you got to, you know, bring it back to those basics to remember who you are and, and re-energize. And that's what we expect to see from Duke here in the round one of a scheduled eight-rounder. Nice right uppercut from Duke Reagan. Especially on the inside. I mean, being out of the ring for a year and being on these bright lights is difficult. It's difficult, difficult on you mentally. You haven't hit, been hit with eight-ounce gloves in a while. Been some time. You know, you, you have a hard time getting in your rhythm as well. But Duke right now looking pretty sharp tactically. And, and you know, his jab is, is one of his best weapons. And when he does use it and see it to the outside, he has a ton of success with it. Kay Karoma has guided the entire professional career of Duke Reagan, but also his amateur career with Team USA in the Pan Am Games in the Olympics. And so he told me, getting Duke back in Vegas on not only in shape and on weight, it was scary, but good scary, because now we're going to see Duke at 100%, and he's as excited as everybody else is. You know, it, it, it's, it's great to say 100%. But Duke is not at 100% just yet. You know, and I only say that because of the long layoff. Mm -hmm. You know, that layoff, you know, you build a ton of rust. You know, you haven't been honing your skills. You haven't been in the gym working consistently. You haven't been sparring consistently. You know, he's been off for some time. It's going to take him some time to get back in the groove of things. So, like, this first fight, he gets through this fight. Trust me, the Ooh. next couple of fights... He's going to be even sharper and sharper because, again, he's sharpening his tools. Yeah, well, Jose Perez is game, and he landed a nice right hand on Duke Reagan. Just to remind him, this is a fight. That means I get to punch back, too, and there's another one. Hey, look who's here. Terrence Bud Crawford, the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Here to see some of his best friends alongside Steve Nelson. He's here to see Kelvin Davis. He's here to see Keyshawn and, uh, you know, some of the other guys. And they look up to him as a big brother, Tim. Shoot, man, I, that's great. I mean, that's their role model. You know, all those guys, they work together. You know, Terrence, Terrence is helping molding them. And they're helping to keep Terrence young as well. Because trust me, when they're in their sparring, it's intense. I'm hearing that these sparring sessions that they have is extremely intense. But it's good to see the champ right there, the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. That's right. There is Terrence Bud Crawford. Will the rematch happen against Errol Spence Jr.? Or will we be seeing him in against the big dog Canelo Alvarez? Let's I hope, see what's next. You know, I've been thinking and thinking about that fight, man. I, I, I've been watching film. I want him to fight him. I really do want him to fight him. I really do think that Terrence Crawford can beat him. You know, and I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now, people. You know, I have my, my concerns, but skills, skills pay the bills. And if Crawford can get in there and if he can avoid a lot of those big shots coming from Canelo, he has the boxing skills and the tools and the temperament to be able to beat him. Yeah, the only concern is if Triple G and Bevo couldn't drop and hurt Canelo, 
What can a welterweight moving up I'm not, three weight classes do to Canelo? I'm not, that's a real concern, though, Tim. It, it, that's the only concern, but trust me. It's a real one. I, I, it is, but skills. I you don't it. let a guy, you don't let a bull. Look, look the bull is, is what, 2,000, 3,000 pounds? A bull, right? But there's a man, there's a man that's in there, right? Matador, right? Yeah. And he's eluding, getting away from the bull. You know what he does to him, right? Takes him out most of the time. You saw what happened to Amir Khan when he tried to be the matador against Canelo, little guy. Well, that's 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 Amir Khan, but Amir Khan was doing extremely down, well until when? Yeah, exactly. Right. Until he got hit. So it was Caleb Plant. Until when? He got hit. Okay. But Bud doesn't get hit. Bud gets hit. But will Bud get hit against Canelo? I don't think so. All right, let's check this fight out because he in trouble. Right Duke now. Reagan in here against Jose Perez. Oh, nice counter right look, from Duke Reagan. Look, Duke, Duke right now is buying his time again. It's going to take him about four rounds to warm up. You know, I, I think it's interesting him being off a year and coming back and fighting an eight-round fight. You know, that says a lot about, again, his mentality. But, again, your, your conditioning gets a little lapsed. Let him go. Let him when you go. don't fight, you're not constantly staying inside the gym. You're not constantly doing world work. And you're starting to see a little bit of that right now. Well, you talk about a fighter needing about four rounds to get, you know, their sea legs back. And when you have an eight-round fight, sometimes you don't have that luxury. No, you don't have that luxury. Well, it's a little longer than six rounds, I can tell you that. But, I mean, right now, what, what I would say Perez is doing, he's doing the right thing. You know, you have a man, you know this man's been out of range some time. He's bringing the fight to him. He's trying to push him in a fast-paced fight. This is a smart thing to do. Let his hands go, press forward. Put the heat on Duke Brady. Keep him up, keep him up, keep him up. We see Richard Torres Jr. getting wrapped here with about 15 seconds left in the Duke Reagan. Jose Perez fight, but he's a heavyweight prospect. Maybe a knockout sensation in the ring, but outside the ring, he shows off this softer side when he puts on some ballet shoes. You want to look heavenly, so make sure your lines and your feet are stretched. Dancing didn't really come about, honestly, until Lomachenko. Lomachenko said that he did Ukrainian ballet, and that's how he got his footwork so great. While I'm nowhere near the best dancer, I wouldn't even call myself a good dancer. I would say I'd try. <laughs> he never bragged about who he was. He never mentioned anything. He just wanted to be a student, blend in, and learn. And up, toss, and drop Ooh. down. Swing around, and hold. Beautiful! I was extra excited because I got to have him a second semester, and he was featured as Gaston in our ballet routine. It is terrifying. I'm not even gonna lie to you, it is worse than going into a weigh-ins at the Olympics because you go in there and you're so out of position. You know, you just gotta rock with it. I feel like that's really taught me some really valuable lessons on how to just kind of be okay with yourself. Remember, Vasily Lomachenko did the same thing to improve his footwork. Now, after watching that's different. what he did, no, it's the same. That's the, he, he did Ukrainian that's, dancing. That's different. Have you seen Ukrainian dancing? That footwork is different. That's ballet. That's completely different. Come on, man. Now you're scaring me. He should just put a tutu on if he's going to do that. <laughs> Come on, man. You're me because my 25th anniversary is coming up, and my wife wants to recreate the uh, dirty dancing scene where you lift. I don't think I'm well, going to break that. your back. I know. <laughs> I better. Let him go. Punch out. Punch out. better hit the gym. Let him go. You better get those <laughs> abs working, nah. man. And I know you got a bad back already. Man, come on. So Richard Torres coming up. It'll be the last fight before we move over to ESPN, where you will see us immediately after the Auburn LSU game. Warning for Duke Reagan for a low blow. Man, I can't believe my Ducks lost, man. It has. Hurt. I cannot believe my Ducks lost, bro. My daughter's Stanford team came back on Colorado. Oh, man. My other daughter's SC team is going to be facing an angry Ducks team next week. Oh, yeah. We definitely going to be angry. Man, it's going to be easy work. 
We're going to take it out on y'all. We're going to score 60 on y'all. Yeah, Stanford can only score 30 again. No, it'll be against SC. That's my other daughter. Oh. They already beat Stanford. SC. I thought, oh, yeah, I thought it was Stanford. So, yeah, SC, yeah. That's going to be a good game. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Blowout. Only problem is SC doesn't have any defense, but can you stop Caleb Williams? Well, we're going to stop him. That's the only guy you got, guys got. Nice little feint. You know, the feint game, I can just tell you this. You know, Duke Reagan is definitely picking up a lot of real estate using those feints. Keeping Perez honest. Nice body shot from Perez, but then a counter right Yeah, but Duke. good counters, but good defense right there from Duke as well. Using his footwork, changing angles, getting his head off the line, using his jab. And doing the right thing and tying up in the inside. Again, we talk about tactics and how important they are and knowing what to do and throw the right punches at the right time. You can tell Duke has a ton of experience. Good stab jab right there. He's looking for something to land over the top. Look for the right hand. And again, Perez is being what Perez is doing, does. There's He's that. coming forward, being aggressive. Slip counter from Duke Reagan. Ooh, that was a nice body, body shot from Watch your head. Watch your head. The pressure being put on by Perez and then Reagan with the accuracy. Yes. Nice body work. Good catch and shoot in there. Then getting out and starting all over. Stop bringing your combination behind that stick. Don't abandon your feints, okay? Come on. Look this up. Breathe. Good, now three. Come on. Okay, Karoma and Tim Singleton in the corner. Body work from Duke. If you're Tim. Oh, yeah. He's trying to slow He's trying to slow down Perez. Going down to the body by shooting high and then going down low. Keep changing levels on his opponent, which is good. Nice little jab up top, sneaking the right hand behind, and then the tactics afterwards, sliding inside, making sure that he doesn't get caught in between that ranges, in that mid-range, what we call it no man's land. Yeah, Duke is hoping to slow down Perez with those, that body work. Fight scheduled for eight rounds here inside the Fort Bend Epicenter in Rosenberg, Texas, just outside of Houston. Digging downstairs is Duke Reagan once again, gets the warning from James Green. And our history tells us, Tim, he likes to deduct points. We've seen that earlier on. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a serious, he's serious, let you know. Let him go, punch out, let him go, break! But he also Stop lets you work on the inside. And that's what I like about him. Ooh, nice shot right there. I do. Good comeback co combination right there from Perez as well. A good uppercut in the inside. All right, it's turning into a brawl. That's what Perez wants. That's exactly out of this what fight. Perez wants. Will Duke oblige him or will we continue to try to outbox him? Nice combination there from Duke with the lead right and follow up left. See, when Duke uses his jab, uses his feints and stay outside, he slows down the pace of Perez. But the minute he get off his jab, Perez just comes through that front door and he's just looking to throw, throw everything he can at him. There Good jab. Stick. Both of them. Both of them, yeah. Perez right there got in the inside just throwing a body shot. Came outside wide with a right hand body shot to step himself inside. There's that stick from... Duke Reagan once again, he, he's actually got a longer reach, 68 and a half inches compared to 67 for Jose Perez. Nice right hand from Bettis. You know, yeah, we always talk about longer reach, but nobody really understands what that means. And how do you get the reach? It only means if you use it. Look, you can have the longer, you can have the longer reach. It just means that you're able to set up shop a little further away from your opponent to be able to land your offense, but you gotta know how to do it and how to use your reach. That's all it means. But how you measure the reach, 
You go from one middle finger all the way across the back to the other one. That's how you're able to measure your reach. It's that simple. Yeah, historically, so they say your reach is supposed to equal your height, but some people have longer arms, some people have shorter arms. Yeah, I know. And, and some people got longer feet and big heads. And I was going to you know, ask you, like, bodies. when they were measuring yours, like, did your head get in the way of the tape measure? No, because no? they're going around the back area, bro. I'm not in the back what about area. your neck? My neck is about a 16 and a half. Ooh, nice short right hand. Good, up. Ooh, good right hand. Wait a rock here. We are coming towards tonight's main event on ESPN. A lightning strike. Janabek's looking for a knockout. This guy is the Terminator. The power of Janabek is real. Oh, the uppercut floors him. There is Janovic, Kazakh style Alim Hanala. He's been calling out all the champions in the middleweight division. Finally, he found a taker. Vincenzo Gualtieri, who is facing his second southpaw, going to make the first defense of his IBF title in this unification bout against Janovic, a man who was trained by Buddy McGirt for his 12 fights in the U.S. And this fight, he's got Brian Valoria working his corner. The Hawaiian punch, you can see him right behind Janabek alongside Egas Klimas, his manager. He's all business, Tim, and he understands that tonight he has an opportunity to take over the division. Yeah, he has an opportunity to be the leader of the division. He'll hold down two straps. You know, he'll be a shot caller. He'll be the one that everybody's going to be wanting to chase because of that. What? version of Janabek will we see? Will it be the boogeyman Kazakh style or will it be the man who struggled against Denzel Bentley? A boxer, a mover, who I'm sure Vincenzo Gualteri will try to emulate in tonight's main event. You won't want to miss that immediately after the Auburn LSU game on ESPN. Inside the ring, we have Duke Reagan in the fifth round of his scheduled down, eight rounder against Jose Perez. He's been gone for almost a year. October 29th of 2022 was the last time we saw Duke Reagan, and right about now is when he should be warmed up and loose. Get the cobwebs off, the ring rust off. But Perez is not an easy mark because he tries to switch southpaw momentarily. Bet is now using lateral movement to get inside. He's coming behind his jab and then following up with combinations. But at first, he was just coming just straight forward. But now he changed up things. Now he's bringing, he's bringing uh, Duke Reagan to him, trying to make him pay for his mistakes. Nice right to the body, a strafing right. Duke can't get anything going consistently right now for himself. And you don't want to allow a fighter like Jose Perez to start to get more confidence. Uh, you never want to. You never want a fighter of Perez's of Perez's repertoire, I would say, and experience to gain. Oh, left hook drops Duke oh. Reagan. Oh my God. Hello. This is the first time that Duke Reagan's been dropped, and he's got a slight cut, an abrasion on the left cheekbone. And here comes Jose Perez in the fifth round, trying to upset the Olympic silver medalist for the United States right here in Rosenberg, Texas. Hey, Tim, you know how today when Washington was Beating on the Ducks, they put upset alert. <laughs> right on Why you got to go there, man? Come on They're now. They're taking their time. K. Karoma taking his time in yeah, washing off in. the going. mouthpiece of Duke Reagan. Yeah, he, he didn't allow him to spit it out and take the time then. But 
the experience of Duke Reagan showing here. As the referee handled everything right. Nice left hook there from Perez once again. Will we see a war here when we come back with round six? Let's listen in to Luke, Duke Reagan. First time he's ever been dropped. These are the instructions in the corner. All right, let's take a look, Tim, how the left hook dropped Duke Reagan. Oh, yep, mid-range right here. Yep, just shooting the jab right there. Had his, he was actually holding the phone. Mm, split the guard. Wow, what a well-placed shot right there from Perez. Look at this lead. Wow, lead left hook. Although Duke was holding the phone, holding the phone. Look at this. Boom, slip right past the glove, right on the chin. Duke never saw that punch coming. You talk about perfectly placed that was shots. <laughs> that was picture perfect because Duke did everything right. Everything. Said and Perez did it better. His trainer said, don't pull straight back. He didn't pull straight no. back. <laughs> he was just He's there. He was shooting man. the jab. He was shooting the jab. And he got caught right on the money. Round six of a scheduled eight-round fight. Round five saw Duke Reagan on the canvas for the first time of his career. Not the first time he spits out the mouthpiece to gain some time. He did that last fight when he was hurt. But here he is, the heart of Duke Reagan showing in round six. One of the things that's going to hurt Duke moving forward in his career is, is that he has no pop. He has no power. He's got one knockout in eight fights. Yeah, in his pro debut, it's been seven straight decision so, wins. So when you get knocked down like that in scorecards, you need somewhat of a knockdown or a knockout to win a fight. He can always find himself in this type of situation to where the fight is starting to heat up, it's really close, and then a knockdown like that, if you can't deliver a knockdown, you can lose the fight. It's an eight round fight. Two points make a huge difference. And you said it, hard to make up when you are not a power puncher yourself. So Duke's gonna have to dig deep He's got three rounds here against Jose El Mudo Perez. You saw the Canelo feint there? Yeah, yeah, I threw the right up and tried to. Oh, yeah. I see it. The, the, the tall, like, linky, wiry guys, they're able to contort their bodies and, and throw punches at odd angles. That's what you're seeing right here. I mean, Perez is doing a little bit of everything. He's coming forward, being aggressive, moving on angles, throwing shots at odd angles. Dipping his head, coming up with punches, throwing uppercuts from far away. Almost remind me a little bit of uh, oh, the, another lead Ooh. left hook right there. We went for it. Well, if it worked once, why can't it work again? He just missed it. Nice body work from Duke Reagan. Like the body type. He's a little bit firmer than, uh, I would say, uh, Navarrete, but I'm just saying, just to, trying to explain just the awkwardness yeah. of fighting a tall, linky fighter like what is. There's a left hook from Duke, but you mentioned the fact that he doesn't have that equalizing power. No, and then most guys are going to go, most guys are, that are strong and they can take a punch, they don't get spooked by the speed or the skills. They're going to they gonna walk down Duke. Duke's always going to have a hard time. He's always going to be in these type of fights because he, he doesn't punch. Get off his head. Break the man. Get off his head. Get off his head. And listen, it's not a knock on him. It's not. I'm just saying, it's not a knock on him. I'm just saying it's the reality. That was very effective going to the body with a right here in this round. Nice counter and a solid right hand from Duke. And he buzzed at the him. bell. And he, yes, buzzed he did. Him. Buzzed him with that right hand. That was a shot he didn't see. Punch was after the bell. Referee was right there. Yeah, I mean he was right there. Duke was in the process. Turned on the angle, shot the right hand. 
just light, just second pass to Bell, but referee was right there. He, and you know how he's a stickler. He, he would have said something if they would have thought. Round seven of a scheduled eight round fight. Tonight we have a 12 round middleweight unification bout in our main event on ESPN. It'll be Vincenzo Gualtieri, the newly minted IBF world champion. Stop or drop this Kiba Falcao twice on his way to a unanimous decision victory. And he will put that belt on the line against Janebek Alimhanala, a duel of unbeaten fighters tonight in Rosenberg, Texas. That will be our main event on ESPN immediately following Auburn LSU college football game. We kick off that card with Keyshawn Davis against Nahir Albright, who is upset-minded and capable of pulling off an upset if Keyshawn is not at his best tonight. Man, Gualtieri's trainer got a... You got a Chef Guardi hat on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Man, if my trainer walk out the house with that thing or the hotel with that thing, I'd say, man, you better take that off, man. It's, that must be that must be a Germany thing, man. German thing. I don't know what that is. Frankie Aldama, he's Cuban, but he now lives in Germany, and we will find out, Tim, if we can get you one of those hats for you to take home. I don't, I don't want one of those hats. No, yes, you do. absolutely not. Ooh, Ooh, nice right hand from Duke Reagan. Follows it up with a left hook. And the way he set that up, beautiful. Nice one-two, but then he got his head up off the line when he threw that right hand. Was able to avoid whatever was coming back. And Duke biting down on the mouthpiece here in this seventh round, knowing he can't just let Perez come through and throw his punches without getting something back. So where, where Duke lacks the power, he makes up with it with toughness. Duke is tough. He's gritty. He's a dog. You know, and you see him bouncing back in this fight right now, coming back to win these rounds. Cincinnati fighters usually are tough. And he sparred Adrian Broner, Tank Davis, Jamel Herring, Ross She Warren, all champions. So they teach you that in Ohio, can't be soft. No. Oh, now there's a cut on the right eyelid of. Jose Perez. We'll see how this, this changes the fight. Will Perez fight with a sense of urgency? Will he be distracted by the blood? Will it inspire Duke Reagan to target the blood? Duke's going a good job. Of cutting off those man. exits. Man, doing a great job of keeping his hands at home, protecting himself, catching and shooting. Nice right hand from Duke Reagan. Take a look at that cut. Mike Basil. Clean work there. And definitely Tim a headbutt. Yeah, but the I mean the referee did not say mm. head clash right there. But did the, the the referee has decided if, it, if the punch was caused by, if the cut was caused by a punch or a head. He hasn't said anything. I mean, I haven't seen anything. Did he say anything or what it was? And I understand it doesn't matter now. I mean, it's, it's, it's the back end of the fight, but I'm just saying I still want to know. Well, it does matter if they stop it because at the TKO, that's exactly what happened with uh, Guido Vianello in his fight against Johnny Rice. But Jose Perez immediately told the referee, James Green, it was a headbutt. But you're right, there was no indication from the referee whether it was a headbutt or a punch. Final round, Duke Reagan, just to recap, was dropped for the first time in his career in the fifth round. But he's been in control for the most part. Yeah. 
Ooh, that, that's the same punch that dropped him to him. And Bettis was trying to set it up again. He's trying to say it. it's a no look. We call that the no look left hook. That's what I just called it. No hook. Now it's a lead left hook. And what he does is he takes his head onto his back foot and throws the, the left hook at the same time. There it is again. See, what you're seeing with Pettis is, and the reason why he's out of his rhythm is, is because the knockdown. Mm -hmm. So the, knock, not the knockdown can excite you. Then you just get kind of prefixated on the knockdown, and, and you try to do the same thing you did last time. So you, you're forcing shots. You know, you're trying to land something hard, and it gets you completely out of your game. You stop doing what worked for him. Exactly. And Duke right now, what he's doing is he's staying poised, and now his technique is coming through. Now Pettis is starting to slow down a bit, and Duke is holding his ground. Good defense right there. Again, catch and shoot. Oh, nice counter right from Duke Reagan. But his technique is carrying him through. His form is tearing him through. And just because you get dropped doesn't mean you lose the fight. No. I mean, it's eight rounds, each one judged individually. Well, it's an eight, it's an automatic eight, ten round. Not, yeah, that one is because he got dropped, but yeah. the other seven are independently scored yes. of that round. Absolutely. But it, it does give the other fighter basically two rounds. Absolutely. So. But to be fair, he's looked great oh, yeah. for the most oh, yeah. part of this fight. It's that knockdown with that, that knockdown woke him up. It really did. I think it settled him down, actually. Like, okay, what do I have to do? Well, let me recover first, keep it simple, do what works. And right. You know, that's a... I'm impressed, man. I'm hold on. This, this uh, rabbit punch could have been a point deduction. We've seen James Green do it earlier on in the night. I think he did the right thing by not taking the point, but... The final bell will mean that for the eighth time in nine career fights, Duke Reagan hears the final bell in a professional fight. So let's take a look at this fight, which started off great for Duke Reagan, and then he had moments that he had to overcome. Yeah, Duke was in control, going down to the body, starting off, you know, using his jab. He's been out of a year, people. He's been out of the ring for a year, dealing with, you know, various injuries, also mental. You know, uh, he lost his father, but yeah, this just was a good comeback fight for him. It definitely was, but this, in the fifth round right here, this left hook, lead left hook off the jab, just finding the seam in between those gloves. That was an unbelievable punch right there from Perez. Textbook. But, you know, towards the end, Perez, he was landing here, he was landing there, but they were getting a lot tangled up. Duke was just able to stay under control, use his defense, you know, catch, shoot, catch shots and punch right back against Perez. And I thought I thought he closed the show very well, although he was knocked down. Well, Duke Reagan looks like he's on his way for his ninth victory. And we'll get our first look right here on ESPN of local Houston fighter Giovanni Marquez. Yes, the son of El Diamante, Raul Marquez, who is also his trainer, his father, the former world champion. That leads us to Guido Vianello's return and also another heavyweight star in the making, Richard Torres Jr. That'll be the end of our ESPN Plus show. Then we'll move over to ESPN after Auburn LSU for Nahir Albright challenging Deshaun Davis coming in here with upset on his mind. That's gonna be our ESPN show leading up to our world title unifying match at middleweight between Janebek Alemhanala and Vincenzo Valsieri. Let's send it up to our El Capo, Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside the Fort Ben Epicenter, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Ellis Johnson has it 76 75 in favor of Duke Reagan. Joe Rodriguez has it 76-75 in favor of Jose Perez. And David Sutherland has it 76-75.
for your winner by split decision, Duke Reagan. 76-75, the fans here don't like it, but Tim, what did you think of the decision? I thought it's pretty fair. Toss up, would have been the toss up. Uh, you know, I, I didn't score this fight. Uh, I thought Duke controlled the beginning portion of the fight. Big knockdown happens. I thought that Perez was controlling the action, and then I thought that Duke finished strong. So, close, 